Hey guys, I'm recording my podcast segment recording. I'm recording my recording. This is segment four. Most podcasts don't last more than seven episodes. So we're on the way there. I'm making this a weekly thing, committing to this, because I have never wanted anything more. To just have something consistent when I know I can work on it, you know, without any outer influence. These are the tough luck hats. I'm sure you've seen it on my story several times. The ones on the merch store that are linked below have white text with the red logo. And then also new in the merch store are coffee mugs that say fuck off on them for every morning person like myself. So go get yourself a fuck off mug to support Desanti. I think the merch is dope. I personally am a merch fanatic. I'm literally releasing things just because I want to purchase them and I wanted to purchase a fuck off mug and a tough luck hat. So now they're up for you guys to purchase as well. I'm heavily caffeinated as usual. No, not as usual. I'm actually really like low, low, low energy. Normally I'm like a super naturally chill person. Enough music. Welcome back. Welcome back to Tough Luck with Desanti. This is segment four. Uh, four, th- four out of four so far. So how this podcast structure works is the segments are the ones that I'm recording and posting once a week. So they're real time, I guess, kind of up to date with current events. We're going to talk about things that I'm interested in that have helped me improve myself that are going to help you improve yourself. And then the episodes, which I'm no longer numbering because I'm just going to title them the guest name. Those are the interviews that have valuable information from the people that I bring onto the podcast. So most of them are actually pre-recorded. I cannot believe Texas opened up. Isn't that crazy? It's absolutely insane. I don't know how you guys are holding up during quarantine. I'm personally doing okay. I think it could be worse. It was worse at one point. Now we're doing better, so that's good. I think people take it lightly whenever I say I'm a workaholic, but it's starting to get a little bit concerning because, and I don't want any of you that haven't been through this to try to tell me to just chill because it doesn't work like that if you've been in my place of being obsessed with working on stuff then you understand that it's not that easy and i think it stems from a type of anxiety that i have over the years i've developed this huge phobia of wasting time and it's honestly sabotaged my ability to enjoy little things like movies shows car rides because I'm constantly thinking during car rides about what I can be working on, working out, just hanging out with people. It makes me anxious that I'm not constantly working on something. It's a little bit detrimental because it causes me to have these cycles of intense productivity and output, but then I crash and have an awful burnout every couple of weeks. And then I have to reevaluate everything that I'm doing, reprioritize to bare minimum to maintain my mental health. And then it just goes back and I pull back on the health stuff. And then I go hard on the work stuff. And I just can't seem to find that balance. My brain just doesn't have a middle it's either I'm working a lot or I'm burnt out and and then I have to see what caused me to have that negative self-inflicted pressure I think this quarantine has caused me to slow down a little bit and lift that pressure because I don't have anyone else also influencing deadlines and what to post when things like that because for the first time I'm solely working on my own stuff and not with someone else and I'm not competitive at all but when I'm working with someone I always for some reason I just I I like working in teams so I end up being like okay come on let's do this and I end up getting overly excited and wanting to even work even more I'm controlling my own pace because I don't have any outer influence what's cool though is I never get bored I have not used the word bored in years and (laughs) I even like get offended a little bit when someone is like are you bored and I'm like are you kidding I don't have anything to be bored about my ideas of lists is never ending I always have something to do but however this lockdown has gotten a little bit lonely especially with 90% of my friends being in relationships actually all of my friends are in relationships except for like one. It's tempted me to find texting buddies, but either they're boring as shit or I lose interest or they end up wanting to talk on the phone or FaceTime and I hate talking on the phone and FaceTiming. I just feel like I could always be doing something more productive than just having a small talk. You know, I'm not interested in small talk at all. 
So they've been either slowly dismissing themselves or I've been dismissing them over the last couple of weeks. And it always leaves me down to, well, now I'm not texting anybody. And usually I'm not because it's different when all of your friends have like that companion and then you're just like, hi, Instagram story. Uh, also, like talking to someone is a lot of pressure. What you should do, what you should say when they say this, how you should act when they say that. It's mentally exhausting to be like, playing the chasing game like the hard to get game i hate that game it's just draining so i just kind of have stopped caring over the course of quarantine and I've, I've actually stopped leaving people on run i don't give a fuck if i look too interested i don't give a fuck if i don't look interested at all honestly this could be kind of nice also a lot of you have been noticing that i got my lips done you would know that i did and you wouldn't ask me if you would have listened to my last audio segment and other than my lips i also got my eyebrows ombre which is the most painful procedure i've done it's worse than getting a tattoo because it's near your eyelid skin so it's thin skin right there imagine someone plucking your eyebrows you know how bad that hurts but now imagine getting a tattoo there it's horrible and i'm doing this because i want to stop wearing makeup every day and only keep it to special occasions and filming days because there's so many unhealthy chemicals in makeup. I want my skin to be healthy. You know, the US only bans 11 chemicals and cosmetics versus Europe that bans 1300. So where did the other ones go? Those are just going to be like allowed in the entire country. That's kind of a big number. What it says on the internet says the natural holistic world regularly spreads snippets around the internet. About 60% of chemicals in cosmetics end up in the bloodstream or five pounds of cosmetics being absorbed by our bodies every year or it taking 26 seconds for cosmetics to be absorbed into the bloodstream i don't know if any of this is true but if it is even true partly that is not really something that i want to partake in for like ever plus if i'm wearing makeup every day for 40 years of my life that's pretty concerning but without any makeup i look like i'm 12 so it's a little bit concerning i feel like i should do something to my face to avoid that not only chemicals in makeup but also chemicals in food a lot of you that have seen the meals that i regularly eat on my story or on my story highlights you know that i like to keep it to one or two ingredient foods or natural organic things like that because it's kind of overwhelming to see the long ass list of ingredients on processed foods or just anything that is anything that is refined because you know the big companies whenever they're processing food they don't have our best interests in mind the lower the quality the more cost effective it is and the more profit margin so that's just how the world is i do enjoy bad foods a lot i actually love junk food i eat a bad meal like once a week but it's not every day it also causes me to enjoy more like if i am craving chick-fil-a or something i end up enjoying it more when i do have it versus having it like every other day or every week because I, I do think food is like eating for pleasure is is fun okay guys so my next segment segment five is crazy festival stories and i've gotten a couple of crazy festival stories from you guys but i want more because i want it to be longer if you want to send me a voice memo to my email hello at desanti.biz send me your voice memo of your craziest festival story and i will feature it in my next segment segment five okay now we're gonna get into the marketing this this is for us solopreneurs. My favorite word that I've discovered is being thrown around, which I think is cool because, you know, I think that word entrepreneur is a little bit like entrepreneur of what? Like an entrepreneur can be like the owner of the Macy's chains or an OnlyFans girl nowadays. And I think the word solopreneur is more specific. Like I'm not responsible for 20 people. That's a whole different ball game than just running your own personal business. And there's a lot more conveniences and benefits to being a solopreneur and that's what everyone needs to learn versus the whole the business model is different right we have less limitations if you own a business right you're a solopreneur you're at an advantage you can release things faster you can work on campaigns faster without have, needing other people's approval and this is also like an artist a model a photographer those are all you're running a you're running a whole business but you're by yourself so you have the privilege of not like you Usually in a bigger company, whenever a product is pending and product development, it's there for a couple months. It has to get approved by upper management. It has to go through tests. You have to find the funding. So it takes a couple months, if not years, for a product campaign or something or for you to onboard 
hired a consultant or something like that it takes it's a whole process versus when you're by yourself it's kind of like the growth is faster and if you have a team it's also slower because now you're worried about other people you're responsible for them doing different things you have to write processes down for them to follow and then you have to check the process and it's just a big game of babysitting that we do not have time for here so this is why (laughs) 